Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to make a quilt called Trade Winds. Now this is a really fun pattern from Cozy Quilt Designs and it uses jelly roll strips. And the nice thing about their patterns, they come with multiple sizes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five different sizes. I'm gonna make the throw size today, which is gonna take 39 jelly roll strips. Now this is the jelly roll I'm gonna use. It's called Bright Side. It's from Robert Kaufman and it has a lot of nice deep dark colors and it has 40 strips. So we're gonna use up almost the whole thing. The only other item we need for the patchwork is a background and I'm gonna use this nice solid white. You may have seen us make this quilt in a video. One of the first tutorials we made for YouTube many years ago was the Trade Winds pattern. But I was watching it the other day and I noticed it's not very watchable. It's early on, we were just learning how to do things. So you may not know this, but we don't have a whole crew who makes the videos. It's me and it's my son. And so we've learned as we go, what camera angles are the best? How can we best show you how to get everything ironed and all the seams lined up? And we noticed in this old video, the camera's shaky and I don't want you to get motion sickness while you're watching it. So I thought if you wanna make Trade Winds the quilt, I'd like to give you a better video, better quality video so you can have fun making this fun pattern. So what I've done here is grouped the fabrics. So I've got some groups of three strips. These are all three at a time. Then I've got over here, some groups that only have two, and I just mixed the colors up. There's no rhyme or reason. You just put two strips together that are two different colors, and there's no subcutting. We're gonna go right to the machine. So let's start with the groups of three. All we have to do with these is make a strip set. So let me show you what that means. So just open one of the strips all the way up, and then we're gonna take second strip and we're going to put it right on top right sides together and what you want to do is use a careful quarter inch seam and you want to make sure you don't stretch either one of the strips now i don't tend to stretch them as i sew but a lot of our viewers do so if, if you notice that when you sew strips together it distorts and doesn't look flat what you can do is smooth this all the way down and put a pin at the far end and put a pin in the middle and then you know if you grab the pin you won't be stretching anything. So just carefully go all the way along the edge here. Now we want to finger press the seam. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to have the seam pressing that way. So I'm gonna open the pieces up and draw my finger or my fingernail, either the pad or the nail, right down that seam. And it kind of presses it in place and it makes sure that it stays open. We don't wanna finger press it with it folded over like this. You wanna make sure you pull it open and then press it. Now we'll take our third strip and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line everything up. Again, if you feel like you're gonna stretch one or the other, just smooth them all out and put a couple of pins in and that will keep you from stretching anything. Now this seam, it's also gonna get pressed the same direction. So pull it open and then just draw your fingernail right down that seam. It makes it very easy to iron these up. Once these are all stitched up, we're still gonna wanna iron them even though we finger pressed. So I'm gonna smooth it out, make sure those seam allowances are laying the way I want. And I've got this nice long ironing table with a nice straight edge. So I'm able to see if my strip set is straight. So for instance, if you, if you have it bowing up like this, you could iron it like that and it would be permanently curved. So be sure you've got it nice and straight and you can press it out flat because our seam allowances are already finger pressed, then use a little steam. 
once you have the strip units ironed nice and flat, we're going to take something called a strip tube ruler, and this is a triangle shaped ruler, and we're going to use the nine inch line on it and that's this line right here that says nine and we're going to put it right on the edge of the fabric hold it down firmly and we're going to cut on that edge and then slide the strip out of the way and then cut on this edge so now we have a nice triangle shaped pieced section now i'm going to take this ruler and turn it around and again, I'm going to put the 9-inch line, but this time it's going to go up on the top. And I'm going to slide it down so that it's right on this edge where we already cut. And you may find that you have to recut this side once in a while, but generally you can just slide it down, put it right on the edge, and now cut this way. And we're, oops, got a little bit left there. And we're just going to keep turning the template around and you have to make new cuts once in a while like right here I can't slide this all the way to that cut edge because we'd be missing something on the corner so I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to make two cuts again so this side and then this side there's not very much waste there and I'm going to continue turning and cutting till I have the whole strip cut up once those are all done, we're going to go back to these groups of two that we set aside earlier and work with them now. Now this is exactly the same procedure that we did earlier, but now we've only got two strips to work with. So just get everything lined up. Don't stretch and carefully sew down the edge. So again, I'm going to finger press to the right. Now, honestly, it doesn't matter which way you finger press this. You can finger press it whichever way is easiest for you. It's just this way is easy for me. For some reason, my hands just move very easily with that seam allowance going that direction. So again, even though we finger pressed it, we're going to want to iron it. So dry iron till it's flat and then some steam. This is also going to get cut using the strip tube ruler. Now I'm going to use a different line here. I'm going to use the six and a half inch line and you can barely get it. I don't want you to worry if your ruler is a little bit over, the tip is a little bit over because we are going to be recutting these a little bit later. So try to fit it all on, but it's, it's kind of a challenge because it's exactly the right size. Flip it around, and again, just keep cutting the whole way down. Now we've got two different sizes of triangles all done, and we need to cut some background. So I can't give you all the sizes that we're going to cut because it's not my pattern. It's from Cozy Quilt Designs, but their patterns are always really easy to follow. I've got my small triangles and my background triangles, and I'm back at the sewing machine, and I'm gonna take one of each, and I'm gonna put them right sides together. They are exactly the same size, and we're gonna sew down this one side here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that with all of these. They're all stitched exactly the same way. Now we're going to take these back over to the ironing board, open them up, get them nice and flat. Now this patchwork, it's easier to iron if you don't finger press it. And that's because this is all bias coming in here. The grain of the fabric is going like this. So it opens up real easy and you don't want to stretch it by finger pressing because you could distort that seam. So just just smash it open a little bit 
and give it a little steam and it irons up perfectly. Now I've got one of the big triangles and one of these pieced triangles that's got the background on it. One of each and we're going to put them right sides together and we're going to stitch along this long side here. And then before we iron this open or open it up at all, we're going to take it back to the cutting board. That's because we're going to trim this down. Now it's easiest if you put this side up and we're going to take our strip tube ruler and we're going to find the eight inch line and that's going to go on the stitching line, not on the raw edge, on the stitching line. So we need to slide this down so that eight inch line is on the stitching line. Then we need to move it sideways so that the middle line right here is on that stitching line. So first I'm gonna slide down till the eight is on the line and I'm gonna slide that over so that that dark middle line is right on my stitching line there. And then I'm gonna trim off the excess here. And so what happens now is that even if my sewing wasn't perfect, all of my squares are going to be exactly the same size. So that's our block. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with all the rest of my triangles. I've got all of my blocks done and now the fun part is laying them all out. So this quilt is a little bit trickier than some to get the blocks laid out correctly. I don't know why, but it is. So if you start with this one going diagonally like that, put the next one on top of it and then turn it. And then this one, lay it out like that one and just turn it one time. And this one, same as that, and turn it one time. Now we've got a nice pinwheel looking shape. So I'm gonna continue laying out all the blocks like that. So the next one is gonna be just like that so it's going to be aiming this way, the next one just like that. Once you get started, it's not too hard to keep laying them out. Now I've got all the blocks laid out here and I'm really happy with how it looks, but sometimes I like to check now and see which color is popping out too much and might make the quilt look unbalanced. So to me, it's this bright pink, and I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that's evenly distributed throughout the whole quilt. Now, one thing I like to do if I trade the blocks around is take a picture of the layout with my cell phone, because then I can make sure that when I was trading things around, I didn't get something turned the wrong way, because it's really easy to fix that now, but it's hard to fix it after you get the whole quilt sewn together. Now, all I have to do is make one row at a time, press those seams to one side, then make the next row, press them to the opposite direction, and be a little careful when you press because a lot of these are still bias edges. So just press it flat with your iron. Then once all the rows are done, we'll stitch them together and we'll be ready for borders. There, I've got all the blocks stitched together. And they went together really easily, really quick. Now at this point, the pattern calls for two borders to go around here. But you might have noticed when you were cutting your strip sets, each strip set had a big scrap on the end. So these here, this is what I had left over. And these would make a really nice pieced border. So I'm gonna show you a way to add an optional bonus border. So I'm gonna take these straight to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch them together so that this edge is about even. So if I put them side by side and flip this over like that. So if I'm using a quarter inch seam here, I'm gonna start right where those two meet and I'm gonna stitch it up. And it's gonna be very jaggedy looking on this edge. So we're just gonna finger press that there then I'm going to take another piece, and I'm not even looking at what order they're in, but you can certainly trade around and put them in any order. Now I'm going to put this again, right sides together. 
just slide it down so that your quarter inch from the edge here will be right in that intersection. It doesn't really matter if it's not perfect because we're going to be cutting borders from this whole big thing when we're all done. So don't worry too much if you don't have this perfectly lined up. So go ahead and stitch them all together into one big long piece. So now I've got this funny looking huge long jaggedy edge piece of patchwork and I used all of my scraps. You don't actually need all of them but um, this way I've got plenty to work with and I'm just going to iron these seams down a little bit. Now you want to be careful when you iron this that you are ironing and smoothing the fabric with the grain not this way because these are bias edges and they will stretch. So just right along parallel to the patchwork. So now I've got one big long piece and it's pretty long. So I'm going to fold it in half so I can work with just half at a time because it'll be a lot easier. So I'm just going to fold it in half and I'm just going to cut it with scissors here and then we will work with one piece at a time. Now I'm just going to be putting this special border on the top and bottom of my quilt. So I only need to cut one border out of this piece and one border out of that piece. And here's the easiest way to do this. Fold it over a couple of times so these edges are fairly even. I'm going to fold it one more time. Now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to make a nice straight cut here. So let's get this nice and neat. It's a little bit thick because we've got some seam allowances there. And I'm going to cut a two and a half inch border here. So that's going to be right here. And here is what it looks like. It's going to look like a bunch of diamonds. Look how cool that is. I've gone ahead and cut and ironed the borders that go on the quilt. So the pattern calls for one border like this all the way around. And then there would be an outside border that was going to go like this. Now we are going to put our patchwork border right here and then come back with our outside border. So the easiest way to do this is to stitch the side inside border on first, which I've gone ahead and done. That's stitched on there. Now I'm going to take the border and measure how long it's supposed to be. This is what I always do with my borders. I lay them across the quilt, not on the very edge because the edge can stretch, and I cut them to this exact length. So I've just folded it over on itself and I'm going to cut it. Now I'm going to use this piece as a guide and I'm going to cut this border to this exact length and this border to that same length. And I'm going to sew all three of these together. So I have a whole border here that's going to go on the bottom. It's going to be the exact right size. Then last, I'm going to put this border on the sides and it'll be ready to go on the quilting machine. I've got all the borders stitched onto the quilt. It's loaded on the machine and now I need to pick a thread color. There's so many colors in the patchwork that I really don't think there's a wrong option here, but I do want to keep it a little bit light so that I don't have something show up too much in these white areas. Even that would look good. That's the darkest option. I could go with a lime green. Now that's going to show, but it's pretty nice. Um, the aqua, I like that. Pink isn't going to show much at all. I think I'm going to go with this aqua. I think that'll look the best. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use this one called Posies. I like that it has little flowers, little swirls, little leaves. And the prints that are in the quilt, they all have flowers, and I think this will look really good on there.
The Trade Winds quilt is all done and I'm very happy with how it turned out. These nice bright colors just made these really beautiful swirls. It turned out 58 by 69. Now if you make it without the bonus borders, it'll be 65 inches long, but this added about four inches to the length. It still fits on the back size that the pattern calls for. The quilting pattern, it barely shows at all. The thread just blends right in, even though it's a very light blue. And I used a similar color on the back side here. I used a nice light aqua and the thread and the quilting look really good on there too. So it was an easy quilt to make. And this is a nice throw size, nice for a gift. But of course the pattern goes all the way up to a king size. So you can make a 103 by 103 by just using more strips and making more blocks. Thanks for watching our tutorial today. We hope you enjoyed it. Before we go, we're gonna have another giveaway. This is the five star quilt. We had a video to show how to make it, but today you can win it. This is all done with Robert Kaufman floral prints called Surrey Garden. Nice floral on the back side. So it's very easy to enter the giveaways. All you have to do is click the link below that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name. And remember, we can send this to the winner anywhere in the world, so good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.